One of the benefits that we offer to those undergoing a vasectomy reversal at our practice uh, is the option of mail-in sperm testing at no cost. Now, although our ideal is to have you obtain a full semen analysis every month after the reversal, this is very impractical and expensive for many people. Uh, as an example, some labs will charge anywhere between $100 to $400 for each test. In our experience previously at Mayo, when we relied on testing such as that, we found that most people never obtained a post-op semen analysis, and even those who did typically only obtained one or two tests in total. But since sperm testing is the best predictor of post-op pregnancy rates, it's helpful to obtain periodic information on sperm counts. This allows us to counsel you better on expectations and alternative planning if needed, and also allows us to intervene sooner if we're considering other medications. So, in this current video, we're going to review the following points. First, how do you send in the tests? One of our surgical assistants will now demonstrate how samples are to be sent. Hello, my name is Alyssa and I am the nurse with the Male Fertility and Peronis Clinic. Today, I'll be going over how to send in a male and semen sample. For our example, we are just using some water with some food coloring today. The first step is to collect all the materials necessary to send in the sample. So you'll need some sample, and this can be collected in just a paper cup or whatever you have at home, um, a small pipette, a small plastic tube, a small plastic bag, some sort of paper towel, either a bubble wrap bag or a small box, a piece of paper with your name and date of birth on it. You can either use the ones that we provided at the time of surgery or just a piece of paper with a name and date of birth and a box to send the sample in. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to transfer some of the sample into one of the tube. We don't need this tube to be overfilled, um, just to the, just to, you know, halfway is perfectly fine. Then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that cap closes all the way. This tube is then going to go inside of a small plastic bag. This plastic bag, along with some sort of paper towel, is going to go in that bubble wrap bag or in that smaller box. I'm just gonna seal this up. The next thing is make sure that you have your personal identifiers and then we'll start preparing the, the box. And then you'll put both your personal identifier as well as the sample inside the box. You'll want to write down this individual tracking number so that you can see how long it takes to get to our clinic. Once the sample arrives, it does take us several days to process them and you will receive an email from us um, from the email that you have on file from the time of surgery. If you have any questions, feel free to call or email us at any time. Thanks. What happens once we receive the test? Once the mailed specimen arrives, we perform a standardized process to evaluate and record results. Because we'll receive as many as 20 to 30 tests or more in an afternoon, we've created a very rigorous process to reduce errors as much as possible. First, the package is photographed in case there's ever a question as to a particular sample. Next, the specimen is removed and the specific identifiers are recorded. We write the patient's specific name and medical record number inside each box in case the patient forgot to include this information. Additionally, every package has the tracking number separately recorded for each patient so that we can track down any sample at any time. The specimen is next mixed up to try to get as accurate an assessment as possible. Sperm tend to clump together, so this helps to assure a more accurate measurement. A small calibrated drop of fluid is then placed on a special slide and these slides have a grid in place, which allows us to more accurately estimate how many sperm are present in the sample. The total number of sperm are counted in 20 separate boxes, and we evaluate both the total number of sperm as well as sperm parts, as this helps us to get a better idea on what truly is going on. We then do a calculation to get an estimate for how many sperm are present in the entire sample. This is then recorded in our medical record system, and an automated template email is then sent to the address that we have on file. This email includes helpful information on how to interpret findings, and if you have further questions, there are contact numbers and email addresses that you can use as well. What do these tests evaluate and how are they different from a semen analysis obtained closer to home? 
With these tests, we're only able to evaluate how many sperm you have per milliliter or the sperm concentration. We're not able to assess motility, volume, or other factors such as that. However, it's important to recognize that while the ideal would be to obtain all of this information, in most cases, it's simply not necessary. In a manuscript by Majub and colleagues, a team looked at sperm parameters and how well they can predict future pregnancy. Their findings are consistent with what we see in, in our results as well. In the paper, the authors showed that men who have less than 5 million sperm per milliliter had a 15% chance of future pregnancy, compared to a 63% chance in those who had more than 5 million sperm. Interestingly, if you had even more sperm, such as over 15 million, your chances for pregnancy were still at 63%. This paper and others show that using sperm concentration alone, you can get a fairly good idea of your chances for pregnancy. The paper also showed that motility and morphology can help predict pregnancy, but neither of these tests were necessarily better at predicting pregnancy compared to concentration alone. So, the take home message here is, whether you use concentration, motility, morphology, or a combination, these tests can provide some helpful predictive information on pregnancy, but none of them are perfect predictors. Well, how do we interpret findings? There are several different things we take into account in interpreting findings, including whether a VV or EV surgery was performed, the time since reversal, prior results, and prior surgeries, among others. Someone, for example, who never had sperm post-op is a completely different case compared to someone who had sperm for six months and then declined. Sperm counts will also naturally vary quite significantly from one test to the next. You can see from the study that we're highlighting here that in a fairly large study of semen analyses in subfertile men who had not undergone a vasectomy, the motility would naturally range from 15 to 60 percent, or in other words a 400 percent difference, and concentrations would also range by up to 500 percent between samples. And because of how assessments are performed, if you sent the exact same sample to three different labs, you'd get three very different results. So there's only so much information which can be taken from these tests, and the trend is probably much more important than anything else. Well, we hope that this video has been helpful. As always, feel free to reach out anytime if you have any questions at all. Thank you.